We're joined now by Sam Chester, analyst at asset management firm KCPS Clarity. Sam, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, so, I mean, Tnuva essentially is an Israeli icon. It's quintessentially Israeli. There's Israeli nursery rhymes about Tnuva. Is that the reason why the responses have been as heated as they were? I think the response owes itself both to the history of Tanuva, 80-year-old company, owns seven of the 10 uh, most popular food products in the Israeli market, but also, as the report mentioned, in 2011, the social street protests that took over Israel, they were prompted by the price of cottage cheese, cottage cheese which is owned by Tanuva. So both historically mm -hmm. and also very recently with consumer prices, Tanuva has been at the center of the storm in Israel. Okay. And why is China so interested in a small Israeli dairy company? I mean, what is in it for China? I think it's a good question. It's something that people are overlooking. And if I, if I can, I would compare it to the previous owners who sold to China, Apex, a uh, private equity based in London, and Bright Food, the Chinese company. And I think it's important because there's something that people often overlook, which is as follows. Apex Partners, the private equity firm that sold its stake to the Chinese company, they're a private equity firm. Their right. goal when they invested in Tanuva in 2007 was buy low, sell high. As a result, uh, as the news reports have shown, they were looking to raise the prices of cheese, of dairy in Israel so that they could sell Tanuva to a customer like the Chinese company and make a profit. Bright Food, on the other hand, the Chinese company, is an entirely different beast. They're investing in an Israeli dairy firm for strategic reasons. If you look at the Chinese dairy market, dairy is expected in milk in China to become the largest market in the world by 2016. Bright Food, as a major Chinese company, wants a piece of that. It's a little, I mean, it's a little ironic, I mean, the Chinese buying milk. I mean, milk is not necessarily traditionally something that's drunk so much in China. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. Uh, one thing you see is as, as uh, Chinese consumers' income goes up, they're buying more consumer demands. And at the same time, uh, you may remember in 2009, there was a food scandal in China right. when right. milk, milk powder, they were all seen to be tainted. As a result, Chinese consumers are looking more and more for foreign brands. As a result, Chinese dairy companies, including Bright Food, which is one of the largest players in China, mm -hmm. have been making foreign acquisitions. Um, and one point I would add, because this is important yeah. in this debate to look at, is Tanuva is not the first foreign dairy company, dairy company that has been purchased by the Chinese. Bright Food itself has bought a dairy company in 2010 in New Zealand. In 2011, they brought a dairy company in Australia. Okay. And just in the past year, they bought um, a, a large food uh, companies, both in England and also in France. So this is right. part of a lo larger global trend. Okay. And, I mean, when you look at it, really, I mean, essentially, this company was already foreign-owned. The British owned it. Is there really a difference between whether the British own it or the Chinese own it? For sure. Um, I think looking at the control issue is very interesting. You saw reports from Israeli politicians in the last few days, including the head of one of the major Israeli parties, said, what kind of sane country sells, its, sells out its food security right. to the Chinese? Now, I think some of those uh, sort of exaggerated uh, critiques overlook the following two facts. First of all, nothing of Tanuva's, none of the animal, none of the dairy uh, kibbutzim are going to actually be moved to China. The cows are staying in Israel. Right. So in terms of the basic uh, products, they're all still staying in Israel. The management's going to stay here. The production is all going to stay here. But more importantly than that, I think something that's overlooked is that uh, the, the Chinese company if you look, sorry, if you look at the Chinese company, they've been making purchases elsewhere, and in the purchases they've made elsewhere, nothing has changed for the worse. And in the control issue in particular, you haven't seen that a Chinese ownership of a foreign company has had a dramatic negative effect. The best example, six months ago, uh, Westfield, sorry, Smithfield, mm -hmm. which is 40% of the livestock market in the U.S., which purchased by a Chinese company. At the time, U.S. politicians said exactly the same thing that Israeli politicians are saying now. And yet the deal was reviewed, it was approved, and so far its stock is doing well. So you could look at examples in the U.S., you can look at examples in New Zealand, you can look at examples in Australia. So ultimately, yeah, so ultimately it really just comes down to the fact that it's sort of like a like American selling Ford, so to speak. I mean, like it's, it's, it's just this company that is so rooted into Israeli culture, so to speak. I mean, the land of milk and honey, you know, that it becomes such a, such a crucial issue for them. I, I think it's a great point. I think something people outside of Israel have a hard time looking at Tanuva and they say, what is Tanuva? And if you understand Tanuva as a company like Ford, as an icon to the Israeli public, you understand why politicians and why consumers in Israel may be concerned. But if you look at the real issues, consumer price in Israel of dairy has been price controlled largely since 2011 by the Israeli government. That's unlikely to change. Mm -hmm. Again, going back to what I said earlier, a private equity firm has a reason to want to raise prices and make a quick sell. 
Right. A food conglomerate like the Chinese company has much less of an incentive to do so. Their incentive, why did they buy Tinuva in the first place? The tech Israeli dairy industry is considered the leader in the world in mm -hmm. terms of producing the mm -hmm. most milk from cows. Uh, the tech transfer, and also uh, Chinese breadfruit is speaking of perhaps bringing export of Israeli dairy to China. Something like that would be tremendous in terms of the larger issue of Chinese-Israel business Of course, ties. it's right. In terms of the larger issue, in terms of Chinese-Israel business, I mean, there's a shift of, of course, Israeli business going towards China. Oh, for sure. You look at investment numbers from China coming into Israel in the last few okay. years, huge numbers. It's very exciting times. All right. Well, Sam Chester from KCPS, thank you very much for joining us. That takes us to the end of this edition. I'm Benjamin Chong Fares. Join us again tomorrow for more on the economy.